drifting away in the widening lace of her bridal train. With white gulls, her bridesmaids, till she was gone. <clears throat> I wanted nothing after that day. Across my own face, like the face of the sun, a light rain was falling with the sea calm. Fall gently rain on the sea's upturned face, like a girl showering. Make these islands fresh as Shabin once knew them. Let every trace, every hot road smell like clothes she just press and sprinkle with drizzle. I finish dream. <clears throat> Whatever the rain wash and the sun iron, the white clouds, the sea and sky with one seam is close enough for my nakedness. Though my flight never passed the incoming tide of this inland sea beyond the loud reefs <coughs> of the final, final Bahamas, I am satisfied if my hand gave, gave voice to one people's grief. Sorry. Open the, uh, open the map. More islands there, man, than peas on a tin plate, all different size. 1,000 in the Bahamas alone. From mountains to low scrub with coral keys. And from this bowsprit, I bless every town in the blue smell of smoke in the hills behind them. And the one small road winding down them like twine to the roofs below. <coughs> I have only one theme. The bowsprit. The arrow, the longing, the lunging heart, the flight to a target whose aim we'll never know. Vain search for one island that heals with its harbor <coughs> on a guiltless horizon, where the almond shadow doesn't injure the sand. There are so many islands, as many islands as the sea's stars at night, on that branched tree. <coughs> from which meteors are shaken like falling fruit around the schooner flight. But things must fall, and so it always was. On one hand, Venus, on the other, Mars. Fall and are one, just as this Earth is one island in archipelagos of stars. <coughs> Sorry. My first friend was the sea. Now is my last. I stop talking now. I work, then I read. Catching under a lantern, <coughs> hooked to the mast, I try to forget what happiness was. And when that don't work, I study the stars. Sometimes it's just me and the soft scissored foam as the deck turn white and the moon open a cloud like a door. And the light over me is a, mo mo is a road in white moonlight <coughs> taking me home. Shabin sang to you from the depths of the sea. Thank you. Many of the great Caribbean writers, a group of which you were a member, traveled north in their youth, and there they honed their craft. Um, your story is a little different. You journeyed north from St. Lucia, but stopped in Jamaica, where you studied at UWI. And instead of migrating to England or New York or Toronto, you headed south to Trinidad. Why did you make these choices, and how much difference have those choices made in terms, of the ki and the, in terms of the kind of artist you've become? Well, I also paint, and one of the obvious things is you can't paint the Caribbean from England. <coughs> you have to be there. <coughs> um, part of it was that. The other thing was um, <coughs> I did study for the Island Scholarship, but I'm awful at maths, so I never got it. A friend of mine did it because he was good at mathematics. But I've never regretted <coughs> what happened about not going to England. <laughs> excuse me, please excuse my condition. I knew I had to write about the Caribbean. I think the only way to do it was to be there. So although I had an ambiguity about whether I should go to England or not, um, I'm glad I didn't, because I might have turned to the kind of writer that I would have had some kind of semi-contempt for. for <laughs> <coughs> 
as I do have a lot now for people who do the... Um, no, I think there's another generation that no longer thinks of developing their career in